Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and well, and I thought I'd go ahead and do another uh, D and D Beyond video. Um, I kind of, I think I got as far as like the character creation, like choosing your race, choosing your class, and all that. Um, this time around, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try creating a character. Or, I, technically, I deleted the characters that I currently created and started over. Um, this time while actually perusing the, the basic rules and stuff and then creating a character through that. Um, and then throughout this time too, like always, I'm going to have some music going in the background. Uh, this time it's going to be disquieting, empty throne amongst the stars. I've played this kind of music before on uh, other videos. It, it, lasts about an, it lasts about an hour, so I don't have to... I don't have to create like two or three albums, make a playlist out of them or anything like that. Um, and plus that would also mean I'd have to do copyright checks on all of them, which now that I just thought about it, I forgot to do one on this one. Um, when I first played this, it was free to use, but as it's been probably about a month since I played, since I played this, um, maybe in that span of time, it might've been copyrighted at some point but right now I'm just gonna go with this so I'm kind of I'm kind of risking having a shit can this video or best case scenario just um upload it to twitch and then just distribute it to all to the to the few friends that I know and just give it to them so oh and it's a uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a cross between dungeon synth and ambience it's also kind of kind of guitar heavy too, so I don't I want to I don't want to say um, soft rock or easy listening, but it I do kind of get that impression. So it could be a cross between dungeon synth and easy listening, kind of a weird combination, which is probably why I like the album so much. But um, yeah. Sorry for the history lesson. I just felt the need to get it out. Um, I did try, uh, I have tried other albums, but either, either they'd be too distracting, or they'd be too quiet. Uh, lowercase music comes to mind, I, that was actually on the table, but, you know, I'm like, I want to hear something in the background, like some kind of music, just not to where, again, not to where it's too distracting, so, so disquieting it is. And I did do a sound check on this earlier. But it it might, even then, I might have to turn it down or turn it up or something. So. But yeah, as you can see here, um, my characters, zero, so deleted them. So let's, um, get that out of there. So let's click create a character. Um, I'll go ahead and click that. And then, um, back up. So I seem to kind of mess this up. So let me try this again. New player guide. Okay, I see what I did. Read the basic rules. All right. So. I think I got as far as here. Yeah, I'm just using my browser. So yeah, I think um, yeah, this is pretty much as far as I got. Um, the character that I'm creating is gonna be a monk. So oh, and I will be um, I will be switching back and forth between uh, my browser and OBS just to see how it looks. Okay, 
And I, I think I went over all these. And um, when I do get to the character creation part, I mean, anybody who's familiar with RPGs at all, like in video games and whatnot, character creation, this is going to be all too familiar to you guys. Uh, but it's highlighted in black. I am hoping you guys can see it. And I do need a... I do need to get rid of a window. Okay. But yeah, the, the six numbers here, this is called Standard Array. Or Array. I don't really know how it's pronounced. I'll just call it Standard Array. Um, but you got six numbers. You just distribute them through your uh, six attributes. Now, the old school first, uh, first edition method or hell, you didn't even roll you didn't even roll four six sided dice. All you did was uh you roll three you rolled uh, three six sided dice and you just counted them up. You only rolled them once for each attribute. That means you rolled three six sided dice six times. Whatever you got was whatever you got. But anyway, yeah, traditional method these days. You roll four six-sided dice and you discard the lowest one. And uh, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea here. And also, I'm gonna try to keep this under an hour because there's still um, there's still all your stuff I want to do this morning. Uh, ability modifiers, typically that's, um, that depends on what race you are. Certain races, like humans, get a plus one bonus to all the attributes. Um, characters, or races, like the one I'm gonna create, is, um, is a half-orc. He's gonna get plus two to strength, and then plus one to constitution. Building pointer. They're gonna talk about him here. Customizing ability scores. Oh, okay. This is another one. I saw this uh, on the uh, third edition. Third edition of Dungeons and Dragons. You have 27 points to spend on ability scores. Um. And normally that's a that's a one for one ratio. Uh, all your score, all your attributes start at eight. But um, from eight to fourteen, it's a it's a one to one ratio. But beyond fifteen, and I think they're gonna kind of kind of talk about it here. Yeah, so. It's a 1-1 ratio if you're going to get your score to 13. After that, it's going to cost... It's going to cost 2 points to go to 14. And then it's going to cost 2 additional to go to 15. Yeah, see, Half Orc, plus 2, Dragonborn... And to my knowledge, in 5th edition, I don't think they um, they get any penalties either. Like, half orcs used to get a... I think it was like a minus one penalty to charisma. Possibly intelligence as well. stamina but again if you guys uh if you guys have played hell if you guys have played world of warcraft bright shiny example right there a lot of this stuff is going to be uh familiar to you see it being part of charisma but uh I could I would 
I could also see eloquence being being tied into intelligence too. I mean, because if you're if you're dumber than a box of rocks, I mean, you ain't you ain't gonna be talking you ain't gonna be talking much except hey, booger, booger. You know, that's about it. And here's the, um, and then ability scores, yeah, modifier, so if your strength is, say, one, you're going to have a minus five penalty on any, like, kicking down doors, um, lifting stuff, carrying stuff, it's going to be a minus five penalty. And then the basic human average is going to be 10 to 11. Okay, so now we're here. So personality and background. And then, I think this here, I'll probably go over this when I start creating my character. But yeah, alignment. Um, this isn't present in all RPGs, but generally it's um, it's just how evil, or how uh, how good or evil you are. And then there's also the law and chaos axis. Um, it's the short of it is uh, I mean there's there's many aspects to it, but I I kind of define it as how um. How well you accept order in your life? Um, I guess how, how, yeah, how orderly you are. Like, um, like kind of, kind of like my job at Walmart, where I'm the kind of person that, um, whether I'm, whether I'm, down stacking a pallet of stuff onto carts, um, whether uh, I'm arranging stuff in our stock room like where the product goes and stuff, I'm very orderly. Everything's got to be in a certain spot. I have to do, I have to have everything set up just the right way. Um, you know, I got to, basic, basically I play post office. Everything has to be in its assigned spot. Then there's, um, I work with, I work with other people over the years who would be, could be described as chaotic. Oh, Joe, just throw the shit out of the cart, man. Don't worry about it. Joe, just, you don't have to set, you don't have to arrange stuff on the car. Just throw it on there, man. I'll take care of it. You know, that kind of thing. That would be a chaotic person. Joe, don't worry about moving pallets around. Just shove them all in there. We'll figure it out later. That's the sign of a chaotic alignment. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take another drink here. Um, ability scores, he flush out appearance of birth. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so and this I actually kinda like this because some of the other um another um another RPG book that I have, uh the DC Universe, they do this too. I, you know you know, most other books, most other games, all they show you is, you know, strength is how much damage you do with melee weapons. And that's it. But they don't, you know, they don't tell you how big and brawny they are. Or, how, you know, how muscular, you know, that kind of thing. So, I'm kind of, another, another RPG book. Um, it's called GURPS. I think it's an uh, acronym for Generic Universal Role Playing System. I think that's how it, what it is. But anyway, they kind of do the same thing here. They actually, you know... Show like a real world aspect of what a, a character with high strength would look like. But like I said, I've seen other books where they don't they don't explain shit. So you can like in a video game, you could have a you could have a character with an obscenely high strength score, but still look like a fucking twig. Look all skinny and stuff. So 
So yeah, high dexterity, live and slim. Yup. Might be either gangly and awkward. Yeah. Looks healthy, a broad eyes, abundant energy, sickly and frail. Yup. I mean, now I'm, this might seem obvious to some people, you know, to some people, you know, or me pretty obvious. Well, yeah, duh. Low constitution, yeah, to be sickly and frail. But again, I, I've read other books where, or I should other books, checked out other video games where, if you had like a, you could have like a super high, super high constitution, but yet, but yeah, you look all sickly and frail and all pale and stuff. So it, you know the. The looks that you create on your character don't really match the attributes. So. Might be inquisitive and studious. Yeah, it, this kind of this kind of harkens back to what I talked about with uh, charisma. They had a, a measure of eloquence. But it also ties into intelligence as well. Because if you're dumb, and, you know, you don't have... Meaning you don't have much of a vocabulary... I mean, you're gonna, you know, all the high charisma in the world, or all the high charisma in the world ain't gonna help you much, cause, you know, you, you ain't got much of a vocabulary. Yep, and they say it here too, inarticulate. I don't know if I can. Cool, you can do it on your, you can hold down control, and you can highlight multiple areas. You know, so, but yeah, they're, so, so the eloquence of charisma and intelligence kind of go hand in hand, so. Okay, and he's. And then starting equipment, I haven't quite gotten to this part yet, uh, the one or two times that I tried creating a character before, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll go over it here when I actually start creating the character. And then armor class, I, I think I said this in um, my last video about this. It's it's a measure of how hard you are to hit. And again, if you played any other RPG, you're going to have some kind of armor class in that game. Um, in World of Warcraft, I think there was an armor rating. You know, or you had, no, you had a defense rating, Diablo. Um, I think all three Diablos, you had a, you had a defense rating. It uh, measured uh, the percentage chance of you getting hit. But um, usually, usually the um, in most other D and Ds, the lower your number, the harder you are to hit. But uh, in this game here, it's act. Or I should say in... I think it was in 3rd edition as well. The higher your number, the harder you are to hit. Without armor or shield, your character's AC equals 10 plus his or dexterity modifier. So... Um, let's shoot up here. I love this, by the way. Good call on D&D &D beyond having this little little menu over here on the left. I could just click one and it'll just instantly warp me to that area. Okay, I thought it was here. Okay, maybe it's down here. Yeah, here it is. So, your dexterity modifier. So, let's say... By some freak miracle, your dexterity is 16. That means you get plus 3. So your armor class... Would be a 10 plus your dexterity modifier. So your base armor class would be 13. But that's, that's when you're totally unarmored and have no shield. Yeah, 
this is equipment, so this is probably something that I'll I'll look into here in the future. Most D&D characters don't work alone. Yep, you'll be you yep, yep, you'll most likely be in a party. Okay, beyond first level. Now, when I go to the character creation, um, again, if you're if, if you're at all familiar with uh, RPGs, experience points or XP for short is going to be all too familiar to you. But when I created one of my characters, there's also an option called milestones, a totally different way of uh, you know, going beyond first level. I would, I would think with milestones, I don't, I don't know exactly what it means, but I would, I would assume that you would, uh, you would substitute milestones for experience. In other words, achievement points. So, you're not getting, you're, it's not an exact point system. Instead, it's, and again, some, um, some RPGs have this too, even if only a small component. You know, like whenever you get such and such achievement, you get a you get a, a big chunk of XP at, to go with it. Um, apparently, you can do nothing but the milestone system. But like I said, we'll we'll probably talk more on that later. So, so features some of these features like increase your ability score, or see your increase score by two. Sound check. Okay. Sound still seems all right. Yep. Constituted 17, reduce eighth level from 17 to 18. Okay. Apprentice Adventures. Okay, learn. Second tier. Of course, um, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's happened a fair amount, but I'll bet a lot of times you don't even get past the first tier. Like, you'll probably end up getting killed before you get to your, to your second tier. So, so, what a, Usually where my head is at when it comes to character creation, I usually don't expect to ever get past the first tier. So That's why a lot of times the, uh, the high level stuff, I normally don't give two shits about because I gotta get to that point first. You know, as one who's been playing MMOs for almost, for almost two decades, you know, the game Gems of War definitely comes to mind. You know, there's a lot of RNG out there. A lot of randomness. So, I've been on the receiving end of quite a lot of bad RNG. So, again, I don't expect to get past the uh, first tier. Fourth tier, to me, is either for those that are either A, actually starting their campaign at the fourth tier, or B, they have some crazy high hopes. Because again, you gotta live long enough to make it here to the fourth tier. I'm gonna take another drink. And it looks like, um, and it looks, looks here like they actually streamlined this. I think they, I think, I want to say they streamlined it on a third edition as well, or I should say, starting at third edition. It used to be, um, a, a, how much your your XP is leveling up depending on what class you were. If you were a fighter, you would um, you would start at two thousand XP, and then it would scale up from there. Um, a robe or a thief. Their, their XP started at, I want to say, 1,250. 
if you were a priest. I think it was either 1500 or 1800. If you were a wizard, wizards had it the worst. Um, it would start at 2500 to get to level 2, and then it would scale up from there. So, but no, like I said, it looks like they, uh, yeah, they streamlined it, made it a lot easier. So, now every, every class starts at 300. So, with kind of with this in mind, with kind of with this in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go over here to creating a character and let me check my OBS. Okay. And out of curiosity, I want to see what this red dice does down here. Oh, D20. Okay. I see how that works. All right. So. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. I just now saw this. Ah, here we are. Um, I'm hoping you guys, you guys can see this. D100. Yeah, these are um another popular dice. Um, percentile dice. They consist of two ten-sided dice. I'm hoping you guys can see this. 84. Okay, that's kind of cool. Means I don't have to, if the situation called for it, I don't have to go digging in one of the many banana boxes of books and all other assorted junk and try to find my uh, one or two bags of D&D &D dice that I have. I don't have to go in there and try to dig all that up and roll. I can just use this thing over here in the lower left. And, um, I kind of have an idea as to, I mean, I kind of talked about it in, uh, in one or more of my cast videos, um, the one or two characters that I created before me wanting to make these, uh, videos, um, so I already know, I already have a fair idea as to what I want, so let's go to race, and then, um, oh, cool, you can randomize this. But I probably want to... Oh, I'm gonna... I wish you could change it to, uh... Like a half-orc name. You know. Miss Mora, Zankas. Dabben. Useless. Um, I might come back to this. Maybe after I choose my race, it'll uh, give me some random, random half orc names. And that is one thing about this music. It, it's great stuff. I like it, but it gets overly repetitive. It's like you know, maybe two or three loops is enough. But not enough to turn this into. Yeah, it's a it's a one hour long video. It's a one hour long album. It has ten tracks, so each track on average is going to be about six minutes long. So you're going to have about six tracks, uh, all of them being fairly repetitive. But like, but otherwise, like I said, I like. This album is a cool album, otherwise. Um, so critical role, non-core D and D. Optional features. I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, here, here's what I was talking about. You have normal XP, which could also do, go on a milestone basis. So what I'm guessing here, it's all, it's all about achievements, less about points. 
And uh, I don't, I don't know what those milestones are. But yeah, at least at face value, it looks to be this looks to be the more interesting option. And yeah, we are going. Yeah, we're going with fixed on that one. Yeah, I don't want to be rolling no one point. Uh... Okay, okay, it's turned off. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, my char the character I intend to create is a monk, so he's not not going to be carrying around a whole lot of gold on him, so I figured that, so this doesn't really, doesn't really matter. So, race, um, I, okay, I, I see what they're doing. They're explaining how everything works first, and then you're going in and doing the, uh, doing the actual work. Age, um, he ain't gonna be no old man, but probably gonna, most likely gonna be a young. Languages, and I think the monk, when you get to a certain level, I think level 13, assuming I live that long, um. I think it's called Tongue of the Sun and Moon, where he'll be able to understand all languages, and um, I believe he'll be able to communicate in all those languages as well. So, okay, so, so choose a race. Like I said, just kind of keep it simple. Just going to do half work. Oh. Yeah, dark vision. Um, you can see uh, various shades of gray. And, uh, total darkness. Intimidation, although he's a monk and probably the way I'm going to play him, I'm probably not going to be using, it, using intimidation that much. This is kind of cool. If you get hit to, if you get, re, if your hit points gets reduced to zero, you'll go to one hit point instead. But uh, I'm guessing that only works once. And then this here, this don't really apply much. I mean, I'm I'm picking I'm picking half work just because it. Uh, relatability, and plus, from what I understand, they're one of the least popular races. And, uh, I don't like to follow the herd, so... Half work. Now we're choosing a class. Okay. And then, um... I think it was here. I'm gonna go to the next chapter. Okay, so we're in races right now. All right, so these kind of go into more detail. But again, really what I'm looking for is our classes, and I want to see what they have on a multi class. Right, let me out. Uh, let me go all the way down. Maybe they have it down here. Well, looks like they don't. So, equipment. Yeah, they don't have it. So, let me go back to the main menu. Yeah, here it is. Multiclassing. And uh, multi-classing, I think, works differently in 5th edition than it did in 2nd and 1st edition. 
in a first and second, the only ones that can multi-class, um, I believe half-elves, elves, dwarves, I want to say gnomes as well. I think halflings can too. Basically, every race other than human were able to multi-class. But I'm guessing uh, in this game, in this version, everybody can multi-class. You know, like, like even humans. So, I guess if I wanted a multi-class, I wouldn't really know. Um, oh, that wizard. Yeah, I, none of the other classes really appealed to me much. Maybe, um, Maybe the cleric, uh, but being a being a worshiper of a uh, ill mater, uh, god of endurance, martyrdom, suffering, etc. Oh, and uh, that's a lawful good god, by the way, not not evil. The his flip side, however, uh, her name's Loviator, the goddess of torture. Yeah, the goddess of pain and torture. He's kind of ill mater's flip side. She's a uh, lawful. I think she's lawful evil. I'm gonna take another drink here. Starting preparation. Okay, multi class. Okay. Oh. Speechers, you don't hire. Yeah, some of this makes sense. Additional rules when you're multi classing. So. doesn't say anything about that but cool they did a good job on this website yeah it's like everything here is clickable So I can click chapter seven. If I don't find what I'm looking for, just simply click table of contents and it brings me back. So awesome. And plus and plus it off. When you start scrolling down, it pops up over here on the left. So just click the green book and back you go. Basically, multi-classing in um, probably as far back as 3rd edition is now a lot more open, a lot more streamlined. So, choosing a class and... Now, something else I... 
something else I do need to look up, and I'm gonna have to do this kind of off the screen if that makes any sense at all. I'm, uh, I'm on a, I'm on another window right now. I ain't paying, I ain't paying no thirty dollars for that. All right, so I'm gonna, a certain way I want to do this. So, let me... Well, here, let me, let me go, let me back up, let me back up. But yeah, like I said, Mark, the monk, um, uses key energy, does various stuff, uh, punching, kicking, Simple weapons and short swords. And then, um... Insight was definitely one. Um, history... Is there two, uh... Knowledge-based proficiencies right here, history and religion. I think, um, athletics was, uh, strength-based. Acrobatics was dexterity-based. So, I'm not really sure. I'll go with athletics. At least in my mind, it seems to be more versatile than acrobatics. And then... Yeah, here's why. Calligrapher supplies. Um, they don't... There's a tough call between history and religion. And then here we go. Determined ability scores. Um, like I said earlier, this is what I'll be going with. Standard array. Or array, or however you pronounce it. So... Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, Thirteen. Twelve. And ten. And then charisma at the bottom. Yeah, so here's what you got. Uh, 12 strength. Actually, you can just scroll down here. Yeah. Plus one. Do the strength. Racial bonus. 
Oh, okay, that's already, yeah, that's already factored in. So, plus one there, dexterity. Plus one there. Same thing. Plus one. Plus two. Because of, uh, intelligence. Or because of, uh, setting it to 14. Same thing. Yeah, charisma. Minus one. we go so this one might take a while so now that I've made them a half orc no that don't sound very orcish I'm gonna I'm gonna take another drink but um he does have an orcish name. He does, or I should say he has a real orcish name. But he prefers everybody to call him. We'll just say Billy Bob. Stick with this. Uh, so the the backstory I hadn't really given a whole lot of thought to. So I'm from here on out I'll be pretty much winging it. Um, the way it's looking right now. Um, parents killed in battle. Um, these parents, unlike most other parents, they're like, they're, they're soldiers, they, you know, go off to war and all that stuff, or they fight skirmishes, etc. Um, usually the children are left at home, like, with a nanny. Not these guys. They bring the kid, they'll bring the kid along. So, based on that, Probably haunted just by watching his parents being being killed. So whatever this thing is that haunts you can't be snowed. Yeah, that I'll figure that out later. Investigation is based on uh, just intelligence. So I don't know. So let me uh, let me let me try something else. I wonder if this affects what uh, proficiency you get. Okay, so yeah, you do get a, you do get different stuff. Spent your life in the service of a temple. I don't know. I mean, my character is going to be fairly young when. The way it's worded there, it's like they're implying that you've been in there for like, you've been, you've been at this temple for many, many years. You're like this old and gray man, but no, he's, I still haven't even worked out how old he is. He's gotta be at least a teenager, maybe in his twenties. He's gotta be a... Probably gonna be a worshiper of a uh, El Mater, so. So let's let's take a look at that. Okay, yeah, it, I was just here, so you have to. 
It's a book you have to purchase. Oh! Okay. I just now saw this. Oh, and uh, the the way it works on here is um, uh, you're not you're not purchasing the actual book. You're purchasing the um, uh, you're basically unlocking it on this website. Subclasses. Okay, so, oh, well, damn. Sure stumbled into this one. But yeah, there is a certain, um... There is a certain type of monk that I'm looking for. I talked about this in my uh, cast video yesterday. It's called the, uh, the Way of Mercy Monk. He's what you get if you cross the... If you cross the Plague Doctor, and it, or if a Plague Doctor and a Shaolin Monk had a baby... You'd, you'd get that. But I'm not even seeing it. I would think it'd be in here. Ah, uh, healer. Tavern brawler. Sub races. Heck. Oh, just two. Spells, arcane gate. Yeah, I'm... I'm not even finding it. So... Uh, so let's go back to Character Builder. Folk hero, um, I mean, a little too young to be a soldier, so I'm trying to bury. So, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and go with haunt, go with haunted one. Problem is, uh Arcana is a proficiency that deals with uh, knowledge of magic, you know, spells, spellcrafting, that kind of thing. And then religion, as is obvious, you're knowledgeable about religious stuff. Uh, survival, he's not a, he's not, he's not an outdoorsy, or he's not an outdoorsman. I'm gonna take another drink. Probably go with that. Um, choose a language. No, I already know common in Orcish. So Elvish. I'd also want to consider well, what languages that uh, his parents know. Just from uh, traveling around with them so much. No idea what deep speech is. But a lot of it's pretty obvious. Um, Abyssal, that's um, that's uh, the language of demons. Celestial, the language of angels. Draconic, the language of dragons. Infernal, um, language of devils. Oh, and, uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, there actually is a difference between uh, devils and demons. Devils are uh, lawful evil. Demons are chaotic evil. Uh, primordial. 
um, earth elementals, sylvan, like fairies and stuff, undercommon, um, language of the underworld. Still don't know what deep speech is though. So I'll probably just say undercommon. Um, maybe his parents took him on some uh, underground, and, you know, some good old-fashioned underground, you know, dungeon crawling. That's the that's what I was looking for. Maybe they took maybe they took this kid along on their dungeon crawls. That heart of darkness. Um, kind of a kind of a spoiler alert, but um, yesterday I watched a movie called uh, One Hour Photo. Okay, well this is interesting. Yeah, whereas uh, the main character in One Hour Photo, I think uh, he was involved in child pornography when he was a kid, um, doing some na like doing some nasty shit with like his siblings or something like that, while his dad took pictures. I mean, not, I'm not saying that I'm not, I'm not saying that's what went on went on with my character, but probably with him, probably just. Witnessing his parents getting killed. Um, you know, when I created my other other characters previously, great idea, but there's a big drawback to this. You can't you can't remove them. Like if I wanted to try something different. All I can do is just add them. I like to read and memorize poetry. Well, in real life, I'm a huge fan of Henry Rollins, so add that one. this. Life's already hard. And, I mean, there's a, there's a real life aspect to this too. It's why, um, whenever I do my cast videos, I often do it reluctantly, but uh, talking about my job, I mean, the purpose of my cast videos was to kind of, was kind of a break away from all that to just talk about stuff that has nothing to do with work. Or things that I can't really say at work. You know, again, sometimes, sometimes I just feel a need that I have to. So, it's not something I do on a whim, but kind of, kind of the same thing here too. I mean, life's already hard enough for people without you adding extra burden onto them, giving them more stuff to worry about. I'm gonna take another drink. This is something else here too. Um, well, well, my monk is not gonna be a not gonna be a staunch or a total pacifist, but he's only gonna mur he's only gonna kill unless absolutely necessary. If he can find a way to stop whatever it is that he needs to stop without any kind of murder or bloodshed, he's going for it.
Okay, and I gotta, I gotta look at something real quick. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of the album. Um, so it's been almost an hour. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loop it. But I'm gonna be finishing up here in just a sec. Okay, um, here it is. So I'm gonna see if I can do this. Now, a funky, a funky looking window might be popping up here. I'll try to stop it as I, as quick as I can. There it is in the lower in the lower right corner. That's the um, that's the kind of monk I'm wanting. The way of mercy. I found it. So, and uh, I'll go ahead and purchase it. Cause again, right now, this is the only class I care about. In cart, so. But let me go ahead and work on that. So it looks like this um, this video is going to be a little bit longer. But like I said, the way um, the way the microtransactions work on a uh, D and D Beyond, you're you're paying for it to be used on this website. It's not going to be like a physical book or anything. Uh, for that, I'd have to pay like 30 bucks for it, which, again, this is another thing I love about this website. I don't, if I wanted to, if, if I wanted to learn, like in my case, just simply Way of Mercy, then I only have to pay for that part because I, right now, I don't give two shits about the rest of the, rest of the book. The book is called Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Which has a whole bunch of other classes, and you kind of saw there, you kind of saw there momentarily. I mean, I don't, I don't care about those. So I'm. I shouldn't have to do this. Really? Picky, picky, picky. Okay, you know, you know, last time I didn't have to do this. Just typed down my credit card number and uh, expiration date, and that was it. <sighs> Sorry about this. I, like I said, I wasn't expecting to have to input all this info. Keep shoving PayPal in my face. Okay, uh, still working on it. it says I have it. Just got to find it. Uh, 
So I at least want to show this. Here, let me. They're supposed to have sent me an email confirming this. Maybe they'll explain how to actually get it. Or maybe even like, uh, where do I go to, where do I go to pick it up? So now it's telling me I don't have it. Uh, no. I'm kind of having a problem here. After you guys have been staring at the same screen for God knows how long. So let me just go ahead and put the finishing touches on this. Because it seems like uh, actually trying to get Way of Mercy is going to take a lot of work. I tried click, I'd act, I tried actually clicking on on Way of Mercy so I mean, it shows it's in there. And all it did was took me to the uh, to the player's handbook. Want me to buy the physical copy? I'm like, no. Go back here. Okay. Let me. Yeah, I I don't even remember if I clicked that one. Okay, it ain't in there. Okay, I'm in a ideals right now. So, definitely that. Probably something you learned from his parents. Um, those who those who fail to plan plan to fail. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Thoughts and discoveries in a journal. Hmm. And again, this is um one of my all-time favorite or one of my favorite books is called Get in the Van, written by Henry Rollins. Like he played in a band called Black Flag. It was a hardcore punk band. But yeah, he he kept a running journal uh, about his travels and stuff and all the all the shows he's played. He still does to this day. So yeah, definitely click on that one. I'm gonna take another drink. Oh, shoot, you only, uh, I forgot to mention, too. Yeah, I screwed that up. You can choose two personality traits, but everything else, you can only choose one. So, I don't know if you can do this. Uh, 
Ashley. Nope, can't do it. Thought I'd be able to highlight and delete them, but... but yeah, I'd probably, um... I'd definitely delete this. The killing monsters. Definitely that. Certain rituals that have... Um... Being the real life schizophrenic that I am, this I, I do this all the time. And plus, um, uh, the the spirits that the character would talk to would probably be uh, probably be his parents. So, yeah, here's what we got so far. So, I guess we can do kind of a kind of a quick recap. But uh the rest of these um, organizations, allies, enemies, and all that. Backstory. This is all going to be a matter for another time. I'll probably have to make another video just about that. So. But, otherwise, uh, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I kind of went over long here, about an hour and 15, so. Was going to try to keep it under an hour, but just didn't happen that way. So. Uh, but, Otherwise, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Bye for now.